Uh, today here, uh, we wanted to, uh, we are not sure how familiar you are with the Uyghur genocide, so it will be like more one genocide 101 type of uh, um, panel. Uh, and we have, uh, first let me introduce myself. My name is Alfidar Iltebir. I am the president of Uyghur American Association. Uh, Uyghur American Association is a nonprofit organization uh, in DC. Um, it's a community-based organization established in 1998. Uh, the goal was, uh, when it's uh, established was to uh, preserve and promote Uyghur culture, Uyghur language, Uyghur uh, religion and identity basically, and promote youth uh, with democracy and other values. However, starting 2016, uh, we were shifting our focus because of the ongoing genocide in our homeland. Uh, so we are trying to do some advocacy, raise awareness events besides the cultural events. Um, so here today, um, we have uh, other Uyghur Americans. Uh, one of them is uh, Tursunay uh, Ziavadun. She is uh, a camp survivor. So she's a, a she was a detainee in China's concentration camps. And uh, she was lucky enough to uh, escape the camp and uh, came to Kazakhstan first and then Turkey and then to US uh, because her husband was Kazakhstan citizen uh, and Kazakhstan government help and she was able to come out. And um, since uh, she came to US, she gave interviews to BBC, CNN, and important uh, medias about what she saw and what she went through in uh, China's concentration camps, including torture, sexual abuses, and um, she will talk about the details soon. Uh, second speaker is uh, Diliar Sepidin. Uh, Diliar Sepidin was just a student who came to US to continue his uh, uh, education. Uh, he um, was just the regular students like you, most of you. Uh, however, he was left with no choice to be an activist because his father was taken, detained to the concentration camps a couple of years ago. And it's been three years, I believe. Uh, he's still asking a simple question like, where is my father? Is he alive? Uh, he's going to share his own personal story as well. Um, uh, Besides Tursunay and Deliar, we also have Kalbenur um, Reni. Uh, she will dial in pretty soon. <laughs> uh, her uh, story is also unique because her sister was taken to the concentration camps uh, years and years ago. And just for having a religious book in her hand, in her house, and also she was prisoned to 17 years. One of the excuse was to having Quran, the religious book in the house. And second reason was praying at her father's funeral. And Kalbunur is also became an activist and trying to be a voice to her voiceless uh, brothers and sisters back home for the Uyghurs. And she had met um, former Secretary Pompeo. She had given, you know, uh, media uh, constantly uh, giving uh, testimonies and asking for, again, the same questions. Where is my sister? Her sister is in, uh, recently we learned that in uh, forced labor camps and working long hours and making clothes uh, that uh, the factories were built inside the for, uh, concentration camps. So we'll talk about those details. They will share their personal stories. And uh, I wanna talk about, um, I have a PowerPoint slides I can go through real quick, but before I wanna uh, talk about um, what happened to the Uyghurs all of a sudden. So I wanna start with saying that the assimilation, the discrimination, uh, like, uh, Treating as being treated as a second class, you know, citizen uh, is not something new. Uh, for uh, years and years, we were, you know, dealing and being oppressed uh, by Chinese Communist Party. Uh, it's just starting 2016, uh, we realized our relatives, our loved ones, our friends were uh, getting disconnected from us. Uh, from the uh, social media channels. Uh, that's the only way we communicate usually. Um, and we, we definitely, they can, can, we disconnected 
uh, from our loved ones and the you know internet and nothing you know works and we were wondering what's going on and and then one by one our writers our professors our scholars our artists singers like all the backbone of our society one by one getting disappeared and detained. Uh, and we still didn't know what was going on and China was denying the detaining, detaining uh, you know, Uyghurs uh, and not giving any explanation. However, after the uh, Canadian researcher um, uh, showed the satellite images of those new camps, uh, uh, then China had to give explanation. And they said, oh, those are vocational training schools. We are educating uh, Uyghurs there. Uh, but those Uyghurs are already educated ones that they detained first. Uh, that's what they said. And after the testimonies given by the camp survivors and other you know, documents, Adrian Zen's reports, um, the Xinjiang police files, the pages of pages of uh, uh, hacked Chinese police documents, and also the 10,000 photos of just one county, the detainees' photos, all those evidences and proofs showed that it was definitely not, not different than prison. It was a concentration camp and so many things were sort of going on. So uh, let me share my screen real quick and I will um, go through who are Uyghurs, why this is happening um, uh, with you guys so we can uh, look into the root cause a little bit closer. Um, let me make this view slide showing. All right, uh, I hope everyone can see my screen. So I'm going to go very uh, quickly. Um, um, so we will talk. We will talk about who are the Uyghurs, why China oppressed Uyghurs, uh, Uyghur life, lives before the camps and inside the camps and outside the camps, uh, and also uh, what we can do about this. So as you see, uh, East Turkestan, that's how we like to call our homeland, uh, and China calls Xinjiang, which means new territory, because we were independent until 1949. We had 5,000 years of history, and uh, in recent years, in 1933 and 1944, we had East Turkestan Republic. However, in 1949, we were occupied by China and then renamed our land uh, as Xinjiang, which is a new, new um, territory. So why China oppressed Uyghurs? So first of all, as you know, China has a huge population. So our land is also big. It's a 1.664 uh, 100,000 square feet kilometers. Um, so it is a free land for their massive, you know, uh, migration, their expansion of their population. And also our land is very rich mineral resources, the cotton fields and oil, like it's very rich land. Um, and geo geopolitically, our map, as you saw earlier, is in the west part of China, which means we are the door for China to open to the Silk Road, open to the One Belt, One Road initiative. Basically, any products they make, if they want to sell to Europe and other parts of the world, they have to go through our land. That's why it's very important for them to control so strict and harsh for them for their economical reason. Another reason is Chinese Communist Party cannot tolerate any diversity. We already have enough evidence and documents from the Chinese government that says absolutely no mercy, strike hard policy, and you know, uh, Basically, they're saying that uh, they cannot tolerate any um, yeah, admit that any other nationality in their land. They want everyone to be like strict Han Chinese who follows everything the government say. So they Uyghurs are different. We are different language, different religion, different history. Uh, that's why they couldn't assimilate us so far. And they're, uh, that's why they continue to assimilate and uh, make a one, uh, you know, nation, one um, uh, land uh, policy. Um, 
I want to go a little faster. Uh, so as we already talked about how their gas pipeline, how their you know, uh, trade line, everything go through our land, uh, East Turkestan. So as you see uh, in the streets, we have very unique, like thousands, you know, I, I'm exaggerating thousands, but so many cameras on every street so they can capture every single part of our lives. We are living in like a surveillance state um, because of the facial recognition and everything they want to follow, what the Uyghurs are doing. Um, so, so many things are going on before the camps anyway, before this recent genocide started. There was forced abortion. My mom was uh, faced to forced abortion multiple times. It's like drug check in the morning. Government employees, you know, doctors comes and rounds up the ladies and checks. And if you're pregnant, you have to do abortion. You're not allowed to. Uh, uh, because um, in the past, in 1980s, there was a one-child policy to control China's uh, population. And because of that, there were two child for minorities and one child for Chinese. So uh, because under the death guys, that uh, rule, uh, they were doing forced abortion and forced contraception. And ban on Uyghur language schools and our language were no longer teach in our schools. Uh, Uyghur and Muslim or Turkic names were also banned, like Muhammad, Fatma, they're banned. Uh, so we don't link to our root, our history. And ban on practice of religion, definitely China looks at religion as a disease. Uh, they think it's a threat to their uh, government's uh, stability. So they look at it like... Um, there are other religions too, not only Muslims, right? There are Islam, there are Judaism, there are uh, Christians, there are um, Buddhists. Uh, however, the government doesn't recognize religion and they're against religion and they don't want religion to unite people. And separation from Turkic and Muslim root, definitely, uh, they're doing that. They rewrote uh, the history books. They rewrote uh, the, the Quran that fits in... Um, their own ideology and the communication with outside China was always controlled, listened, and you know, cut. And life inside the camps, uh, let me be faster so others can speak. We don't have much time. So, this is the camp, uh, the photos you see in the bottom. Uh, this is the camp, as you see, this is their uh bathroom inside the room. It's the, a bucket, basically, very small room, crowded, not enough, you know, room. Uh, those people sleep on that bench, eat on that bench, learn on that bench, learning meaning uh, political indoctrination. They do everything in there. And there are cameras, no windows. Uh, it's strictly watch 24-7. Even at night, the lights are not off. And um, so political indoctrination, what our people are going through, uh, a uh, number of the people inside the camps uh, is one to three million. I say that because State Department said it is two millions and the Pentagon said it's up to three millions. But however, we Uyghurs believe it's much more than that. Um, so there are political indoctrination going on. There are torture, there is sterilization. Um, in fact, the camp survivor Zumrat Davut was sterilized as well. That's one of the evidence we have. She has I even mean, the paperwork that, um, that shows uh, that she went through sterilization. And there is rape, gang rape. And also, as I mentioned earlier, they're building, uh, they built um, factories inside or near the camps. So there's forced labor and organ harvesting, unfortunately, uh, separation of family and children when the parents are taken to the camps, the children are taken to the state-run orphanages, boarding schools and kindergartens. And they're raised as a Han Chinese stripped away their identity, their language, their culture, their religion. And uh, I, I am afraid of our future in 20, 30 years, uh, how our uh, future kids uh, will be. Uh, and also China used uh, those people as a, you know, the testing zone for their medicine, for their shots, for their technological tools like facial, voice recognition and the cameras. Uh, the photos on the right, on the top, as you see, that is an airport in Urumqi and Kashgar. Airport on the floor says a fast lane for organs uh, and organ transport. You imagine how much of the organs are being transferred from Urumqi, from Uyghur region to other side, to the hospitals for the world demand that they need a 
faster lane at the airport. Uh, in uh, Holocaust, after the Holocaust, they count the schools to see how many people were died. But China is smart enough, and what they're doing is building crematorias around the camps, and they're burning those bodies. So in the future, we can't tell how many people they killed. All those people in the camps, before they take in their DNA is taken, their full scans of their body, you know, ultrasound, everything is taken. So China has a massive data to use for the organ harvesting, for the organ transparent uh, market. Um, so this is the photos. As you see, it was just a mountain in 2015 and 2018. There we go. We have a camp that can hold 70,000 people are in, only inside Urumqi. And we have over 570 camps uh, in our land. Outside the camp, so we talked about the camps, what they go through. Outside the camp also, people are surveilling state, as I said, the cameras everywhere. They can't trust anyone. Like they're constantly afraid of speaking up, uh, you know, naturally. Uh, sterilization still outside the camp, it's going on. Forced abortion going on, forced marriage. So as I mentioned, uh, China had the one child policy starting 1980s. Uh, so what they were, Chinese were doing is uh, doing abortion for the girls so they can keep the boys and continue their last name, continue their route. Uh, so what happened at the end after 10, 15 years is there's so many bachelor rates, so many male proportion much higher than the female. Uh, so with this you know, discrepancy, they need more females. So they were looking around the countries around. And of course, Uyghurs are there for them. And they were, uh, government itself has ads and said, if Uyghur marries a Chinese and uh, there is an incentive, they will give house, they will you know, increase their salary and things like that. And unfortunately, some of the rural areas, the Uyghurs, when they reject, they're threatened by the government saying that their parents will be taken to the camp if they're not taken yet, or if they're in the camp, they will be killed. So girls, Uyghur girls are sacrificing themselves to marry a Han Chinese government officials to save their parents, save their family. And this is a one sad tra tragedy that as you see on the photo on the right, who will be that upset and crying on the wedding? Uh, unfortunately, this is another truth going on. And the Chinese relative plan on the photo you see on the right, uh, the camp survivor Zumra Dawood also you know, uh, witnessed, but she had Chinese relatives in her house. So what the, the government came up with a systematic plan that they send the government cadre to the houses of the villages and uh, rural areas that they stay at like one Chinese man stays in the house of Uyghurs and reports everything they do. Are they praying? Are they saying uh, against something against government? Are they um, you know reading Xi Jinping's book or not? You know, those kind of things. Or even the kids, they're asking you kids questions. Your parents, do they pray? Do they fast? That kind of things. And unfortunately, it's unbelievable that a stranger in your house stays with you for months and reports everything you do, but that's uh, uh, going on in our homeland. And transfer Uyghurs to inner China, according to Adrian Zen's report with uh, Associated Press, uh, 1.6 million Uyghurs unwillingly, you know, Tellingly transferred it to inner China to the factories as a forced labor uh, unit. Like there were articles that says Uyghurs for sale. I have 500 Uyghur women who can work for you, you know, ages this much. Like it's so sad for us to see things like that. And unfortunately, under just as a slave labor and forced labor, our Uyghur people are producing clothes uh, that are, you know, ex to the world and stripped away from identity, language, culture. We already talked about it. And this is the birth rate again, uh, the forced sterilization and abortion and birth control. We talked about it. This is again from the Adrian Zenz report, AP report, that the birth rates fell 60% from 2015 to 2018 and 24% in 2019. Uh, the kids were sent to, uh, we already mentioned the uh, state-run orphanages and boarding schools and uh, uh, kindergartens, unfortunately not given to the grandparents or others. And like some Uyghur, Uyghurs in exile and Uyghurs in diaspora recognize their child from those photos, unfortunately, that they were in the basically 
child's camps. Um, as you see, Uyghur culture is such a rich culture. I told you we have a history of like 5,000 years of history and kingdoms and uh, even republics. Uh, our um, architecture is so beautiful. Uh, the houses is like so in details, as you see on the left, but that is all being destroyed by Chinese government as well, as you see in the bottom and on the right side, is because that shows again our rich history, our rich culture, and they want to destroy that. They're against something different there than their culture, than their history, than you know themselves. And mosques, as I said, the religion is also considered as a threat for them. Uh, so they uh, kept couple mosques as a symbol uh, for to show to the tourists or the media, but they uh, demolished so many uh, mosques that are historical mosques and beautiful mosques in other cities and states. Um, and the Uyghurs outside, um, um, I apologize if you hear that voice, I think I, outside somebody is moaning their land. Um, outside the China, outside East Turkestan, our homeland, Uyghurs are also suffering. Uh, we call it transnational repression. Unfortunately, most of us are getting threatening messages from China's police and China's long hand. And they uh, basically Chinese government hold our loved ones, our family as a hostage and trying to control our activities outside here. And what do they do? They call us and say, don't go to political activities, don't speak up. Don't say, you know, delete your tweets about. So that's what they're trying to do and constantly make us uncomfortable, make us scared, make us uh, think about our loved ones back home to trying to silence us, basically. Uh, this is a guy, um, Yusuf Canamat in Turkey. He was also forced to uh, be a spy for um Chinese Communist Party, Chinese embassy in Turkey. When he rejected, he, later on, he was also shot. Uh, that's uh, one example I was just, you know, sharing here. Another tactics they use is all the students outside China, Uyghur students, they trying to bring them back and they uh, arrest them. So what they do is when your passport expired, they don't renew and they say, you need to go back to homeland, you have mainland, and then you need to renew it there. And when you go there, you're arrested. Why? is because the students who visited um, outside China, uh, especially Western countries, they now know they're exposed to democracy, they're exposed to freedom of speech, they're exposed to freedom of religion. They know Western ideology, how to be uh, free and democracy. And that's what China is afraid. And they're afraid when they allow those students go back, these ideas will spread. They will tell other Uyghurs and they will teach others uh, those values. And they're afraid and that's going to be uh, the end of the Chinese Communist Party's stability. And uh, that's, you know, other reasons. So recent updates, both Trump and Biden administration declare uh, what's going on in China, the China's oppression as genocide. And after that, uh, seven other government uh, followed Canada, UK and other parliaments and EU also uh, said that it is genocide, it's crimes against humanity. Uh, however, we still see the uh, Muslim countries and African countries and other countries silence. The uh, US put many uh, AD, over 80 sanctions, uh, visa restrictions and business advisors are put up there. And uh, two bill passed in the US is one is Uyghur Human Rights uh, uh, Policy Act. And second one is Uyghur, Human, uh, Uyghur Forced Labor uh, Prevention Act. Uh, we would like to thank US and our Congress members for um, this uh, because uh, impacting China by um, human rights condemnation is not going to work when we hit their pocket, when it hits their economy, when it impacts their economy, then uh, I think they um, react and maybe they change their policies. So we believe in that and we continue to uh, advocate for the bills. Current bills are Uyghur Human Rights Protection Act, uh, which uh, gives a refugee P2 status for Uyghurs. And other, other bills are um, like the Disclosure Act, and uh, we can talk about these details later. And uh, UN uh, recently uh, uh, uh, published, uh, uh, released a bachelor's report 
So it says it's a serious uh, risk of crimes against humanity and international crimes. So after that, now UN also has its responsibility. Mostly Western countries are uh, trying to support. Just recently, uh, Canada read the uh, statement by 50 UN countries uh, uh, citing the Uyghur genocide and to do something about it, to hold China accountable. Otherwise, China is still enjoying impunity in the UN and in, in the world because of their uh, economic power. There have been silencing uh, African countries and Muslim countries uh, with the trade incentives and other, you know, and threats. Uh, that's why um, it's still it's six year uh, the genocide are ongoing. People are still in the camps, and this is going on. Uh, what can we do? We can raise awareness. Um, you know, just like this, uh, have a you know event in universities and colleges, and tell your neighbors, tell your friends, and and basically tell them what's going on in China and why Uyghurs are being oppressed. Uh, support Uyghur organizations, human rights. Uh, Uyghur American Association, Uyghur Human Rights Projects, you know, their campaign for Uyghur, many Uyghur organizations trying to do the same thing, be a voice to their voiceless people, um, donate them if you can, contact your Congress member, tell them you support Uyghurs and you want your Congress member to uh, stay with Uyghurs and uh, stay with justice, stay on the right side of the history and advocate for Uyghur bills and, you know, contact us, uh, work with us to do, um, advocacy work and lobbying work at the Hill. Um, that's uh, all I said, sorry if I take too long. And I am, uh, going. we are going to take questions at the end, but uh, I would like to now ask Tursunai to briefly share her personal story so uh, I can translate it for you guys. Tursunai, uh, I'm the Suzy Kaldi, Gerksons Buldo, Beshminot Lam Gerksak Buldi Kena. Uh, with all respect to your time, let me go to Kalbunur next, and then I will go back. I know I'm not following the uh, orders, but uh, we will hear from our sister Kalbunur, whose sister is in the camp, and then we will go back to Tursunay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, all right. Let's take it back. Alaykum salam. Beş minutla vaktimiz bakken azlam kıskıçı nimi köydünüz, bişiniz de nimi ötdi, kandak de aşılanı dəbbəsiniz, ha? Mənə, mənə. Sorry. Uh, we apologize there at work and trying to get you know another room and trying to give this because we're holding this event every week with different universities so it's a little challenging to create the time mm -hmm. salam. hello everyone uh, hello everyone, uh, greetings. My name is Tursunay Ziaudun. I am a concentration, China's concentration camp detainee uh, at the same time survivor and a witness to the concentration camps. I went to um, camps twice, 2017 and 2018. In total, I stayed one year inside the concentration camp. Lunch, <laughs> 
first time when I was uh, uh, taken to the concentration camp, so I was on the street. There was no explanation. They just said there is a meeting and they took me, arrest me from the street and take me to the concentration camps. And there were around 1,000 people there. There were old ladies, there were young girls and very crowded and I was among them. Şükründen başlayıp biz ne onu açıda mecbur birçimizdeki yağlıklarla evet işkı mecburladı, çoşu güçlü işkı mecburladı. Künde jığın dep bir jığın açıda şu anda silen musulma diyen gepne dimeysle işkanda Allah yok. Başta diyen nesneyle ders ötti birinci katın başta. Um, the first one when I was arrested, um, they put us in a big room and they took our uh, uh, head scarves. Um, they forced us to eat pork. They they made us. Uh, they told us that uh, we were not supposed to say we're Muslim, uh, and also we were learning uh, like indoctrination documents and um, materials uh, that was denying our religion. Ono işte kriyen adamların hepsi şu sebebi, fakat çetelik çıkarlar üstün minan sebebim şimdi. Kur'an da kutu kalmak için, namaz da kutu kalmak için, yağlık çıkkenlik için, uzun kıyneklik, kıyneklik için, fakat Uyghur bu kalmak için başlıklı dayıttı. Uh -huh. The main reason I understood later that the reason was that I was Uyghur, my identity. But uh, this, the excuses they were given for us, for all the ladies, I think she was in, she was in the ladies camp, uh, is because Uh, some people read Quran, that's why they were arrested. Some people were, uh, went uh, wearing hijab, that's why they were arrested. Some people were wearing long dress, that's why. And some are uh, went outside China, like went overseas, just like me. And those are the many, uh, one of the reasons why those people were arrested and put into uh, detain, uh, concentration camps. <laughs> Balını artık balı tutkallık için mi? Mesela üçten artık tüt balı, beş balı tutkallanan aşk ekirdi, yeri kirgeden. Also, um, one of the reason was to having more children, um, like three or four, was also a reason to be taken to the uh, concentration camps. Birinci kıtım şunda men, men ucu işte başlık dersten ötüş deryanda, tamak pek naçar, onun için de men bir ayda hoşumlu bilmeyi zıklıp, kırdım, ikinci kıtım, ikinci kıtım, on sekiz, yan tutup ekirdim yine. Uh, first, first time when I was arrested, uh, it was very bad condition. Uh, for example, uh, there were not enough food. We were always like hungry. Uh, uh, I lost conscious because of the malnutrition. I was sick and that's how I was out on the first time when I was inside. And what they were doing is basically brainwashing, like teaching us the Chinese ideology. Mm -hmm. İkinci kıtım kırge vaxtında aş yanlış o kent abadeyin iken o vay kent katli kadi özgürüp getken türüm getken hem meyri bütün korcalgan tarap tarapı da sakçılan turadı net metri yada adam yıkılır. Fakat bizde tutup gelgelerine ekir etdi. Kırgen ikin bunun için işikten kırgenden başlapılan buran kudum mübettar kabeyleş uruduğun adamını aş tokta yaklarla urup zıqılgan aş da eskilişip getken. Fakat yıkılır. Sakın. Second time when I was arrested, it was much different. As soon as we were taken to the camps, it was a big uh, building. It was different. There were so many police uh, with uh, weapons, uh, armed police and, and armed police. Um, and the, the condition was different too. Uh, then I second time when I was arrested, I faced the torture. I, I was hit by sticks and batons and I went through so many uh, bad memories. I went through so many bad things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> İşçigatta doktor hallanım ekrip aşna olmaz doğan her şu doktorla ki de bu tekşirip adamla aşta doğan doğan işkin kriyandlı bir birinci gün kriyandlı aş bir mumayne köz aldım aş yağlıklarını julup elip aşna yağlık bilmek hiç yapmıyor. Grup aşta kalıysa la üzgünüm demek. Hatta mi? And the first day. 
first oh. day when I was uh, uh, arrested for the second time, I remember there was one old lady uh, who had a uh, headscarf and it was taken and she was hit and so bad and she was undressed. Uh, it was very sad that the the atmosphere was also different because it was so overcrowded. Men were in the other section, women were in the different section, and uh, it was totally uh, unacceptable um, view. Hatta minimum şu kulağım ne aşağılkan eliş için aç tat julup kanak kız başta julup kaldı. Şu akırgen ki bir küçük dört metrelik oyunu açtı ki akırdı jigermede keden birinci kutum birinci dörtüncü oyun kamerde biz. Mm -hmm. They were very rude, uh, they were very uh, harsh, uh, even the earrings on my ear, they wanted to take it out and they just push it, uh, like pull it out, my ear was almost bleeding, uh, they put me into uh, a room that is like a four meter square feet, uh, we were like almost 20 people inside that small room. Uh, şu dakikada işte de bir küçük çilek koyup bir obrniğim çıkamaydı. Aşk çilekini açık obrniğe kızla mecbur de. Hatta işte obrniğe bir gün bir kıt kıtırgan neymiş kaldı. O üç minut vakit veriyordu. Onu ulgen bir sanat aşk uğrup yanıp aşkta kıldı. Bir ay dın aşkam iki ay boğandı. Bizde sonra kılıçkı başladı. Tanfuat hep açık. Her bir tanfuat çıkan vaktimiz uğrudu, kinaydı bizde. Um, the the condition, the hygiene in the room was terrible. There is a bucket in the corner, and that is our restrooms, and everything is being watched. Uh, unfortunately, we don't even have enough time for the restroom breaks. It's only three minutes. If you pass, you will get hit. Uh, that's how we stayed there. After a month, they start to interrogate us, taking us to the questioner interrogation room and questioned. And every time we go, we get hit, we got tortured. Şikayetin aşkında aşkına işçi de yanı bir öyü gibi bizde. O bir nesba öyü de yutki de. Yutki hep. Yutki kendi kendilerim. Tekim onun için de her şey bir özgür işler payda buldu. Keçilere adamlarını sorak bulan, açık gibi bulan, açık gibi bulan buldu. Saat 10 gün kim başlandı. Kedip lan kayız kızlar, mandak mandak da. Tepelen çık, çıktaydı, çıkmış açtı, açık gibi bulan kızlarını. Bazıları kemme yokap gibi bulan, bazıları kes üç gün, üç gün de bir kere bulan açtı. Unfortunately, another sad thing I witnessed is at night, um, the police were coming and saying that they were taking us for questioning room and the young girls uh, were disappearing. They were selecting girls and taking out. Sometimes they never come back. Sometimes they come back as like a almost dead position. Uh, and we didn't know what was going on. Her gün buyruklu çıktı, yukarıdan buyruk çıktı, da buyruk verdi. Bir gün ki çarşılarımız ne? Ayalar mecbur çıktım da tuşu başına da tat tutup çiçin eşet tızlıp turu turuslar tızlıp dedi. Birden birden ki nöbetle kelimiz çarşın çiçimizle kesip etti. Yani bir 15 kere öt kız yani buyruk çıktı. Bütün ayalar açık Thomas operasyası kıvetti. Hatta kosuğunda balısı alanı balısı mecbur apırıp düşürüp etti. Bir ayal kosuğunda balısı bak kırıp diye açtı. Yeah, um, the rules there was constantly changing. They didn't even know what's going on. They uh, once they took us at the beginning and shaved our head uh, to to cut our hairs. After of like fifteen days, then they took all of us to a different room and they did forced sterilization and even forced abortion for one of the lady who was pregnant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kedi sarang karabatın aşı özünü çekirap bakırap taşlıydı. Kutusunu kertti. Aşın kutunu söyleyip şöyle. O iş ahırı benim beşim onu geldi. Beni bir şekerim neç yaşlı kız bir kız bulan kedi deyip çıktı. Yani benim aşıda oylattım ve aldı da sonra kan uğrattı. Bula kaynaydı. Arkın asfabına bile. O kedim uçunda kaynadı, azapladı. Kızını köz aldı. Bize baskın çılak kıldı. Tamam. So I was... I talked, uh, the girls disappeared at night being tortured. And one day they also called me and uh, I was out and I witnessed what was actually going on. Um, they uh, sexually abused us. And even in front of me, they raped the other young girl. And then she didn't want to talk about more details. <laughs> Ördük tıratı. Bizden aralığımızdan, deli sistem olan 
Әрләнің балығын біліп тұрады. Әр вақыт ауазыдыр кеп тұрады. Кетшіден кетшіділен бұл айлық тұрады. Ашты адам қиын ашты башылам деп дәймем мән. Кетшісі әр қыл ауазыда оғыланын қиынған оғыланын чекірап вақырайымай ауаз деген аш. Расми бір қаллағай қаллағы ақырған дек ашты чекірап кететті ұланы қанда қиынады. Бекен, о бізнің бір мәлілік балықты әшін тонып қан кейін, үйліклер чыққан чақты көрдіңіз ма дегенде мән көмідім мәл балым дедім. Бекен, мәл үсә көзім бірден әш балым көрдім. It was unbearable at nights. You hear screams, you hear people begging and help for help. And I cannot describe what I went through. Every single night we went through this and it was very scary. And it wasn't just females that were going sexually abused. It was also, you know, the men side we could hear men screaming yelling too sometimes it's so loud so uh different that you can't even differentiate if it's an animal or human or what's going on uh we we're just like uh uh on like living like that in that uh situation and i even witnessed once that uh, they made me pass through a room that a man uyghur man was hanged out uh upside and there were so many cuts on his body and there he was tortured uh we went through all this inside the camps <laughs> Айтуғы қасыпа білім қиынаған ті аяллан үшін дақтыр әләші ілә чық қиыныш ба ұланың үшін мән ұланың әмісін айшын дақтыр өліп кетті деп өйлеме көз алып өліп кеткен қызда бір ең ұзуған сүрәмеде дейелмеді лейкен жығылап айшы қан кетіп қан кетіп өліп кеткен әлі мән көз алдымызды қызда. Couple girls died, I witnessed their dad uh, with uh, losing too much blood. And I know after they called me, I know what they went through because they are, their torture is inhumane. They use those batons and sticks to your private area to torture you. And I went through that. And uh, because I went through, then I understood why those girls were uh, so silent and or okay. losing conscious. Кичеді бір доқтыр қан бәтті, доқтыр қан әкелған ашынан әрдайым апыр бізнің қан тәкшіріп, қан намыз неліп, әшә беріп, тәкшіріп, бәзілені басқы бір тәріпдәк үйткеп, әкетті бадап, тұзлап әкеткенді біз көйді қар қалды кейдіріп басынырға әкеткен нұрғын әдемінің. Inside the camp, is there is a small hospital when you like very terrible, or they take you there, or sometimes they check your blood, they use for the testings and things like that. So uh, when I went there, I also witnessed a very unacceptable reality. Баллық боламайды деген нәсі білен, айы әрләнің әрлісі мәте үшкі бұп бұп біліп әште оттағаны көген. I've seen uh, people in those uh, hospital rooms that uh, not just women, they were being sterilized, also men were going through the sterilization and they were just destroying us. Мәне шу дақтықыды оның ашыда, оның дәп. Әп түгі тәмеймә бір жылының үшіде, ұның дұмын нұрғын нұрғын аш келіп атқан ұның үшіде. Мәсілен, ашытың ма қанчылығын әдемілі өліп кетті. Мәсілен, біз мән мәне түкетім аш келіп аш келіп аш келіп аш тұзылып ял өліп кетсем тамақ бәмей кеткен күндір болды. Мәсілен, мүшәді кесәйлі мұтырсынайды Lastly, I want to say uh, there are so many things uh, I can tell. It takes long time, but starvation was another big issue in there because so many Uyghurs are in the camps and uh, not enough food. And so many times I lost conscience and not didn't get enough food. And I was begging them to give me bread. And uh, those are the things that I went through there. Рахмет, мұш жығын орлаштыған, мұш ойығырдың ашық көңіл болып тамыш орынды келеге, рахмет, рахмет етіме. I would like to thank everyone who organized this event, who allow us to talk and share our stories.
چون بزن یادم کنیش نه اربر آدم نم بلش نه بکرگان چنگ نه اختراع نم کنچ رو بزن بولو کرات کنم نه بزن بلش نه متقل مه و مت وقتاب کردن یا باگر نم اشتی دک نظر تیشه دم نه کرات دو هت تا یک وقتاب بونم که هر کی کدام بوختای نم بزن بنام کنچ لک بنام من بزن کج بزن کج یه انسان داره چون اشتیش نه رحمت چیز نه ده ها ازر خانگ یه نو سوال جواب کلیم از دایدو مال نت چکتیم خاتمی از پول دیا. I hope you know what's going on now that you can say I didn't know and I hope you help the raise awareness of this Uyghur genocide. You help those innocent people because we are very helpless. And thank you so much. I would like to thank for Tristan I had this speech. Because of her husband being Kazakhstan citizen, she was able to come out. And uh, now we would like to go to uh, Kalbanur and share her uh, personal stories. Hi, um, good morning, everyone. And firstly, thank you so much for organizing this event uh, for Uyghurs and also like same as and I would like to thanks to like uh, giving attention to Uyghur cows. And my name is Kalba Nurgani. I grow, I born in China and then I lived in China until 2015 until I went to study my master and PhD in overseas. So uh, I think most of the general part already covered by Alfida and also Tursunai, uh, Sister Tursunai. So like, uh, my part, I would like to give testimony what happened to my family during this Uyghur genocide. And from my family during like last five years, at least 12, 12 of them, is, and including, including my sister and then my six of cousin brother and sisters and two uncles. So this is my sister photo and this is her son. My sister... She was teacher in the primary school and government primary school. She's art teacher. She had the literature and also art. She paint her, literally paint every day and teach children how to paint. She was detained in 2017 for the mass concentration camp and along with a lot of teachers together. Any given any any and after she stayed in the mass concentration camp like two and a half years. Later, like she stayed two and a half year until like end of 2020, and they give sentence her 17 years. Seven years that she prayed at the, our uh, father funeral. My father is uh, passed away in 2013, and then additional 10 years for she keep a religious book, which is Quran. Actually, there is a no book found, and then after I. When I ask my family members, this is the only excuse the government use it to get a long sentence to sister and then other relatives. And I have one uh, another cousin brother, twenty five years old. His name is Mamajan Yusuf. He was detained in twenty seventeen too. And then, like in the in the twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen, I believe there's mass detention for the Uyghurs. Like I think at least millions of us detained. They detained first for a few years. Until a few years, they just torture whatever they want to do, just do. And then after that, they they come one by one. And then some of them, like few of them, was released. Some of them, most of them, like my sister, my brother, they give him long sentence. They given to my uh, cousin brother Mamajan life sentence for 25, 25 years old boy, like without any reason. I don't know. And then my uncle Jafar Tumur, he they gave him also like the he detained 2017 after that they give him 20 years long sentence and many other my cousin sisters and brothers is missing because I mean overseas I don't know where are they and then they are alive or dead and since I giving this testimonies and also like speaking up since 2019 and Chinese government start to harass me through by like WeChat, call me every day or every other day. And then if I don't pick up the WeChat call and they bother harass my mom and they they threat her, if you if you daughter not speak like not answering I uh, you call, you will be punished. And then my mom every day begging me, please answer their call. So I have to answer. When I answer, like as Alfida say, they say like you need to stop from speaking up. You need to stop like 
tweet or you need to delete all your tweets or you need to sp- like delete your videos because because I started to speak up since 2019 for my sister freedom because she has not only my sister my other relatives and all other Uyghurs all Tyson didn't do anything wrong because of identity they was detained so since I speak up Chinese government so so unhappy and they tried to silence me in many ways like like uh, still like uh, Alfida State, there is like threatened message from the truth by my Twitter and the Facebook, like that's that message, or you will you you will be killed if you keep speaking up. So of course I didn't stop for speaking up, and I'm speaking last four years, and the things still keep going. It didn't change, but we had faith. I believe in justice, and I believe in God too. And this will be in one day, and then we will be, China will be punished its own on crime soon. And But we need your help, and we need your support, and we need you stand in our side. Yeah, if you have any questions, I'm here. And then I think there's one question about uh, Tosun I says there, like the call is Kusher asking how she escaped and how she can be like openly speak up in here. She didn't escape. I remember in 2018, there's a Kazakhstan government had to negotiate because there's a lot of Kazakh people also detained, not only Uyghurs. And Kazakhstan government that negotiate with China, there's a release 2000 Kazakhs. And Tusunai's sister husband was Kazakhstan's Kazakhstan citizen. That's the reason she was released because of her husband. And then she was in Kazakhstan before she moved to the United States. I hope that's answer your question. Uh, thank you so much. To save the time, we will go to Adiliar Saipedin now to sh- share his history, and then we can go to our questions. Go ahead, Adiliar. Uh, while we're waiting for Adiliar, I can maybe answer the question. I think there was uh, somebody that not all yes, not all Uyghurs was detained. There is a Kazakhs, there is Kyrgyz, there is Uzbek. Uh, most of the Turkic ethnic minority group that that's like who was like. Uh, we are practicing Islam also who is like similar with the Turkish identity people all like most of them is was detained. Diliar, can you try your mic now? Yeah, can you hear me now? Okay, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. So, <clears throat> hi everyone. So my name is Diliar Sebeden. Um, I've been in the US since uh, 2014. Uh, today, I would like to share one of my tragic story, which is um, related to my parents. Um, I've been lost contact with my, uh, I never seen my parents almost like uh, seven years by now. And then I completely lost contact with my father. Uh, his name is Seyfuddin Yimit. Uh, this is his picture. So uh, it's almost been two years I lost contact with him. And then because China, Chinese authority forcefully detained him and then put him in the concentration camp. So what reason? Just simply because he sacrificed himself and then um, sent us to the free country like US and then get the higher education. And that's the only reason he they are punishing him. And then um, since that, I never talked to him. I don't even know he is alive or dead. And then only my mom was left uh, outside and then she's at home alone. And then um, even with my mom, I can talk like regularly, just as usual. And then um, whenever I talk to her and then try to ask about my father, uh, she's like a very crying and then she's like very sad and then also scared because she cannot say anything about my father. And then we usually just say like, uh, like uh, not directly say my father but we just say like your grandpa so i just say how how's my grandpa and then she's like always like trying to avoid the topic and then she just say yeah he's fine he's fine uh and then just either hang up the phone or just uh, switch to different topic because of the chinese constantly monitor our um conversation in the wechat and maybe you will know like you know there's some news about like uh, how chinese app like a uh, WeChat or maybe other app, they can uh, monitor your speech or like videos, etc. So, um, since I come, um, uh, I was I came as a, a student, and then uh, after that, I start to work as uh, IT. 
um, right now I'm working in the progress so uh, insurance as a software test engineer so I have my daughter right now I have my family here it's like uh, it's kind of like very sad every day it's kind of like uh, affecting my psychology as well because I usually I was trying so hard like uh, for example like uh, your parents try so hard to give you like a uh, all the education all the support you need and then by the time you get uh, you go to us and then get your education and then go to work suddenly you build your family here and then when you try to bring them to uh, live with you suddenly they disappear and then i don't know uh, my father is alive or dead and then it's like a very he is kind of like my hero uh, he did a lot of things and then I was not worrying about my mom at the time, but as if it's not enough right now, uh, maybe you heard like there, it's been like three months, the lockdown, all the Hulja, my, which is my hometown. And then, uh, and also, also other, other cities, the lockdown, uh, the cities. And then because of the zero code, zero code policy, that's kind of like excuse for them to, uh, like uh, killing all of our people. My mom also in the city is, he, she's in the at home uh she's been like three three months she cannot go outside and then recently i talked to her and then i was like so worried about her and then she keeps saying don't worry don't worry it's okay like uh, she doesn't want to say anything bad about chinese so that's why and then but she said like uh, son our home is very cold and then i was asking why don't you pay the uh, like don't you have the the heat etc and then she said no we cannot go outside so we cannot pay the bill and then there is no heat, no like AC, etc. So and then at home, it's winter is coming. She's like very cold at home. I was like, I don't know what to what to help her. And then it was like so emotional. And then I just say, okay, mom, like we will try to save you, etc. And then um, yeah, that's what's happening uh, in our East Turkestan right now. Um, when I come to US, like for, uh, eight years ago. Uh, I completely like start to uh, lost contact with my all my friends and the students uh, like my classmates. Uh, the only way we can contact is the WeChat. And whenever I see the WeChat, people start deleting me because I posted some pictures about like US, like I'm in the university, etc. Because they they know like they they are not allowed to contact with the outside, so they start deleting my profile. And then we we no longer I no longer contact with anyone. So. Yeah, that's what's happening uh, in the East Turkestan. And also uh, about the same question, there was one question uh, as being asked to Sunai. I feel like uh, you guys need to be like respectful in my opinion, because she's been tortured. She's been even, she said raped. And then people keep asking like uh, how she escaped. And then is it like, it's kind of like a joke to them. So I don't like that kind of question in my personal opinion. And then um, uh, also I saw some, uh, maybe if I am allowed to share with you, uh, share my screen, that I, I saw one person was asking about uh, uh, like a Hui minorities, if they are also like being treated as the same way. So I found some videos about, uh, as you can see, these those are all Hui Muslims. It's, uh, they are not in the East Turkestan, but it's uh, inland of China. So they were praying and then uh, the Chinese like uh, tried to demolish the mosques. They already demolished most of our mosques in East Turkestan, but those are the uh, mosques outside of East Turkestan. This belong to the Hui minorities, and then they are also trying to demolish those and then they kick kick the people outside of the mosque. This is like worshiping place. So as you can see, those are like a uh, uh, Chinese military. So it's like a, it's the same towards uh, most of the other muslims also and also uh, there is uh, some videos i found about like our uyghur people as you can see uh, because of the lockdown outside the city they've been like uh, no food no drinks as you can see there is no food there, there no water as well so the, the people people dying from starvation it's like it's happening right now like we are, as we speak right now people are dying over there so as you can see, their refrigerator is empty, everything. And then uh, as it's, it's not like, uh, like as you can see, those Chinese, like they, they're, uh, they don't give the food to the people. And then they're like, uh, like uh, dumping all the foods to the, like a 
food truck, like trash. So those are all the foods. Uh, and then, because of the uh, time restriction, DR, let me, uh, DR, okay. let me stop you here. Uh, just okay. to add to that, yes, uh, the recently it's been more than uh, three months. China is using COVID guys as an excuse to uh, starve Uyghurs in our homeland. So basically, prisons are full, concentration camps are full. Now they're using our own house as our own prison. Uh, do they deliver food? Yes. If you have money, they deliver food. So Chinese are getting food. But most Uyghurs, not all of them, uh, they live paycheck to paycheck. And when they don't work for months, they don't have money. So they can order food and they're starving now. And um, the Radio Free Asia and other media is uh, showing the debt uh, coming out of, uh, you know, the under the guise of COVID. Uh, however, there are China is still building more camps uh, for the future detainees. So this ongoing genocide is still going. Um, looks like we are, you know, out, ran out of time. I would like to answer the questions that you have. Uh, so, uh, but we don't have much time and I will share my email address. And if you can email it to me, uh, I would like to go through one by one and answer your questions. And feel free to contact us for other reasons as well. If you want to organize any events in your church, in your synagogue, in your mosque or other places. Uh, it, one of the question was, is it because of your Muslim or because of your Uyghur? I think it's both. And that's why China assimilated all other 50 uh, uh, nations nationalities in their like minorities in their land but uh, Uyghurs were different they owned that land until 1949 we were occupied and also Uyghurs identity their history a long rich history their religion their language everything is different and uh, our religion also kept us not to be assimilated easily um, we had our own army, own country before, and that's why until 1949. So that's one of the reasons why they're still trying to do. Their goal is, Chinese Communist Party's goal is, assimilate us and make one Han Chinese country, of course, and be a number one economical power in the world. Um, again, thank you so much, and I will uh, turn it to you guys. <laughs>